Hello, everybody. This is Kate Sarashne from Dedicated. I'm in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent 2025, and I'm here with Vikram from IBM. Vikram, I just sat in your really interesting, insightful session where you talked all about scaling AI agents. And my first question to you is, why is it so hard? So the number one problem that customers have with scaling um, AI agents is around to ma making sure that from a performance perspective, from a production perspective, you're able to scale them not just for a few users, but for hundreds of thousands of users. The reason customers want to use AI and agents is mainly around automation. They want the agents to take some automated actions. Now, trust is a problem. Resilience is a problem. Scalability is a problem, right? So these are all the reasons why um, customers are hesitant. Hmm. It's not that they cannot do it, but that there is no trust in the system just yet, and they are finding ways to find that trust. And these are some of the main reasons why scalability and performance of agents is very important, um, and it's also at the same time very difficult if you don't think about observability and governance from day one. Right, so you mentioned trust, and I love that. I think we, even as ourselves, we trust agents to do some activities and not others, mm -hmm. and I guess similarly, in healthcare and financial services, like we just heard in your example, it, it does take a level of you know guardrails and governance to make sure that the customers in the end can actually trust that the agents are making the right decisions. So how does IBM, and you, know, you can also talk about your partnership with AWS here, how mm -hmm. do you actually help your customers scale and while at the same time keeping that trust in the agents? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So the one thing we do at IBM is uh, we have this opinionated way of how you can build agents. Mm -hmm. So we have this uh, concept called agent ops that we came up with. It, it was actually our IBM research team that came up with it. And the idea behind agent ops is that when you build agents right from day one, you start looking at, okay, I want to govern these agents. I want to observe them. I want to make them, um, I want to monitor them for scalability and performance. So if you have these guardrails in place and if you're building agents that way, then it becomes a lot more easy for multiple agents to plug and play with each other. And it becomes a lot more easy for you to scale no matter how many hundreds or thousands of people come to use the agents, uh, it, it becomes a lot more easier. Mm -hmm. So our um, advice and recommendation, and this is not something that we just tell customers, we do it ourselves, is make sure you're building agents in a particular way, that way you can easily monitor and observe them. So think about observability and monitoring as a day zero problem. Mm -hmm. So you want to think about it from that particular point in time rather than, okay, I built an agent, now how do I observe it? So that that's a huge issue that we want to avoid. That makes sense, and I guess it's similar to hiring people, right? You're not gonna hire 100 people before you have a manager or someone who is going to tell those people what to do. Otherwise, everyone's just running around doing Absolutely. whatever they want. Absolutely. And I think the second part of your question was also the trust in the agent, right? Yeah. So we cannot have agents which are 80% accurate or 85% accurate. Um, so one of the ways we encourage our customers is like use agents for automation. Maybe you want to use it in the lower systems, like in development and test systems, mm -hmm. before you do go into production. And we see that, you know, at least me talking to customers and clients, I see the trust building more and more over a period of time. Uh, the more accurate the agent is in lower systems, they are like, okay, I can trust it, and they turn it on into production as Yeah, well. that makes sense. So you'll take more of a phased approach to build that trust and then expand further. Now, in your session, you mentioned for enterprises to have agents, you have some core criteria. Just briefly, tell my audience, what is that criteria that they need to look for for enterprise agents? Mm -hmm. So the number one thing is uh, more than, so uh, like almost everyone right now is under a lot of pressure to make sure that they're doing something with AI and agents. Ooh. So the number one thing is we need to find out what is the use case? What are you trying to do? What, what are you trying to automate? Where agents can really, really help is around uh, repetitive tasks. So if there are repetitive tasks, that's where it's prime for automation. And agents are uh, capable of taking actions and, um, autonomous actions mm -hmm. uh, more better than humans can. So with maybe little human intervention, they can even get better. 
Yeah. But uh, we see a lot of customers using agents in making sure that you can take auto remediation, automated actions, self healing. Self -healing. Yes, yes, I remember that's that. The word. Self healing. Yeah. I love that phrase. <laughs> self healing. And uh, we see this more and more, and uh, we see more customers deploying it for these use cases. But I also um, hear from customers that, like I said previously, they will probably do it in lower end systems first. And over a period of time, they trust the systems, you know, the automated actions that agents can take. Mm -hmm. And then they are more open in, you know, scaling it to production systems as well. So my recommendation is to, uh, you know, start with agents. First, find out what the use cases are and see what you can automate. Right. And there is wastage, I would say, in probably every team out there. So the question is, what can you automate? What are the repetitive tasks that you can automate? And can you use agentic AI for that? Right. And if the answer is yes, then go build agents, keep observability and monitoring uh, in your mind since day zero, I would say. So that, that should be your first step. Before you even think about agents, think, think about that. Yes, yeah. ground zero, it makes sense. Um, and I also wanted to ask, do companies have to start over? You know, they're building on different tools. They've been evolving in data, AI, analytics, data architecture. Are we all starting from scratch with agents? Uh, not at all. So, I mean, the entire um, AI area and agentic AI, there are so many new frameworks and, you know, um, other technology evolving on a day-to-day -day basis. But when you think about the observability side and the monitoring side, what we are doing at IBM at least is we are extending our current set of tools mm -hmm. uh, to go monitor agents as well. So, if you're used to using our tools like application performance monitoring tools for the last several years, uh, we can't come and say, okay, stop using that and for agents now use something else, right? Mm -hmm. So we are extending our current set of tools to have the ability to monitor agents and to govern them and to observe them as well. So I would say, no, you don't have to stop doing what you're doing. Uh, you may have to tweak a little bit you of can your build processes. On top of what you build you on top of it. Okay. And, and it becomes a lot more easier when we go to customers and tell them, you know, keep doing what you're doing or, or tweak what you're doing or build on top of it rather than saying, stop everything that you're doing and let's go start from scratch. That will never, that will never work. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Um, so Vikram, last question for you. I know my audience always wants more, right? So where can they go to learn more about what you're doing at IBM? So we have this uh, really good page. It's called the observability page. It's ibm.com um, and there's an observability page. <laughs> yeah, I learn everything about agents and observability and monitoring that we do around agents. Okay, amazing. Well, Vikram, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you for having me. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs>